Hello again. As you know, I'm Eli the Computer Guy over here for Everyman IT. Today's class is the OSI model this demystified. Now, uh, if, you, if you've done networking for any length of time or if you plan to do networking, you probably have heard of the OSI model. And almost everybody hates the OSI model for some reason. They, they hear of the OSI model and they all they think is that they're just going to have to do a lot of memorization and it's going to be a big pain in the butt. Uh, honestly, as a technologist, been doing this for, for a long time, the OSI model is an incredibly useful tool. If you take the time to learn the OSI model, it, it makes life easier for you. Uh, to understand all the OSI model is, is it's just a logical model for how network systems are supposed to communicate to each other. So basically, all the model does is break down the different components of network communication and kind of slot them into layers. So you may hear of the physical layer. So the physical layer is all the wiring, all the, the, the physical stuff that connects computers together. Uh, you then have uh, layer two, the data link layer. This is the layer where, where switching occurs. So all those switches that, that you plug your computers into, all, all of what they do resides on, on, on layer two. So basically the OSI model is seven logical layers that allows you to think about a networking problem and then and then figure out uh, how to try to try to fix the problem. If you understand how these layers work, it's much easier to focus in on what the individual problem is uh, in a network system and, and, then, and then fix it. Uh, programmers, uh, they, they do it the opposite way. Instead of fixing things, uh, they use the OSI model to, to, to narrow in and figure out exactly what they have to build for. Um, like I say, it's not that hard, it's not that complicated. This will be a short and sweet, simple little class. Uh, this class on the OSI model is focused from the IT, from the technologist standpoint. So for, for troubleshooting and such, if you're a programmer, well, I don't know, take a programming class. Uh, we're not gonna deal with it here. Basically, I'm going to, to explain to you the OSI model, the way that I actually use it and show you how it helps you troubleshoot problems and zero in on, on what the, the problem you're having is. So uh, so give me a second and we'll I'll get the whiteboard over here and we'll 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 dig into this the OSI model. Okay. So the OSI model, this is just O-S-I model. Okay, the OSI model is made up of seven layers. The layers from top to bottom are for what is closest to the end user, so what the user is interacting with, all the way down to actually shooting the information out on the network. So the first layer, the top layer, layer seven, is called the application layer. Now the application layer, this is the layer that the user is actually interacting with. So things like Firefox or Internet Explorer. If you're going onto a, a website, the application layer uh, for that whole communication with the website is Firefox, Internet Explorer, Explorer Safari, Chrome, etc. The, this is the layer that, that the, the user is actually interacting uh, with the information on. So uh, if you're doing email, this would be uh, the actual Outlook application. Underneath that is what's called the presentation layer. And this layer uh, is basically the layer that the operating system is on. So you interact with the application layer. That sends information down to the presentation layer, which is generally, the, the, like I say, the, the layer that the operating system works on. Underneath the presentation layer, you have what's called the session layer. The session layer is the layer that deals with the communication, creating a session between the two computers. So if you are going to a website, basically your computer at the session layer has to create a session with the web server uh, that you're trying to access to get data from. So that's what the session layer does. The session layer actually creates the session between your computer and the computer you're trying to get information from. Underneath that is called the transport layer. The transport layer, uh, this layer is, is what um, 
decides like how much information uh, should be sent at one time. So when you're communicating with a website, this is the layer that decides how much information you will communicate to the website, how much information will be communicated back. This deals with the transport of, of the data back and forth. You then have the network layer. The network layer is the layer that routers operate at. So you know your, your router uh, that you have at home, or you know, if, you've, if you've been doing you know, networking technology, you know a router. Routers operate at the network level. So your IP address is at the network level. Underneath this, make sure you're still on the screen, yep, uh, you have the data link layer. The data link layer is the layer that switches operate on. Uh, so again, you know, all the computers on a network get plugged into a switch so that they can talk to each other. That happens, that, that layer is called the data link layer. And then underneath that, the final layer, layer one, is called the physical layer. Physical. The physical layer is literally all the physical stuff that connects uh, the computers together. This includes patch panels, uh, uh, patch cords, the cabling, etc. So basically, if, if, if your computer isn't actually connected to the network, if you don't have a patch cable running from your computer uh, to the network, then it's a layer one problem. You, your, your, your network cable isn't connected. If a cable gets cut or if a cable is miswired, that would be a, a physical layer problem. That would be a layer one problem. So basically, I mean, this is, this is pretty simple. You've, all of you've got is seven layers. You've got the application layer, You've got the presentation layer, you've got the session layer, you've got the transport layer, you've got the network layer, you've got the data link layer, and then you have the physical layer. So again, how, how this works out, you know, slow this down, make, make sure you guys understand, is when you're dealing with physical layer problems, physical layer, again, is all the wiring and cabling. So again, if a patch uh, cable gets unplugged, that's a physical layer problem. Um, there's really no, there's no, there's no fancy configurations here. There's no DOS prompts. There's no Linux prompts. There's no fancy stuff. Basically, this is, this is cable. This is Cat5 cable. That's what the physical layer is. Uh, as one uh, senior network administrator uh, told me, 95% of all networking problems are layer one problems. Basically, somebody unplugged the damn cable. Pretty simple. Now, above the physical layer, so this is, this is how things are connected, above that is this, the data link layer. This is where switches uh, reside. So we're going to have a class on switches to explain how all of this works better. But basically, the data link layer, this is where things called MAC address uh, addresses reside, these are called media, uh, yeah, media access uh, control. Uh, these addresses, every single uh, networking device in the world has an individual MAC address assigned to it. That is all, all part of the data link layer. Uh, there is something called ARP, ARP, Address Resolution Protocol. This, this is, again, how switches work, how they actually operate. We will have a full class on things like ARP. Just understand, Everything about how a switch operates uh, resides on the data link layer level. So that's layer two. So you, you may hear the term layer two switching. That, that's layer two switching. Above the data link level layer is then the network layer. This is where things like IP addresses reside. So uh, anything you do with the TCP IP protocol with IP addresses, all of that happens at the network layer. So uh, if, if you put in the wrong IP address and then you can't get to wherever you want to get to, uh, that is a network uh, layer problem. If the router dies, that is a network layer problem. So anything uh, that involves your IP address would be a network layer problem. Above this is the transport level. Uh, this has to do with things, something called windowing. So uh, windowing is a process where, where, where computers uh, send information back and forth. We'll have another class on that one. But basically, the transport level, again, it, it decides uh, how large a block of information should be sent. How long should the computer wait before it receives an acknowledgment uh, that information was received, sent or received. So that's the transport layer. 
level. Honestly, as IT people, we normally don't play with the transport level uh, very much. It just kind of either works or doesn't work for us. Above this is the session level. Again, every time a computer communicates with another computer, they have to open up a session. They have to be, you know, communicating with each other. So uh, again, if you're if you're going to a bank's website to look at your your, your bank account information, when you go to that website, you create a session between your computer and their computer. That All of that happens in what is called the session layer. Now above the session layer is again the presentation layer. Basically the presentation layer, all this you should really think about, is basically the operating system. So it's, it's a lot of configurable information, but it's not generally what the user is, is actually playing with. Uh, the user is normally up on the application layer. Again, the application. So whether they're using Outlook, uh, whether they're using Firefox, Internet Explorer, Chrome, whatever, the application level layer is the actual application that the uh, that the user is interacting with uh, to send information back and forth. So again, this might be Skype, it might be Chrome, it might be whatever. Now, like I say, in, in the real world, what, what most of us deal with with the IT level is, uh, you know, you have application layer problems. So what does this mean? This means Firefox is corrupted, Outlook is corrupted, uh, there's a misconfiguration, etc. So, so if you sit down and they say, my Firefox isn't working, and you click on it and it's corrupted, well, that's an application layer problem. Uh, then you have the presentation layer problems. Uh, generally, this is device drivers are messed up. Uh, something within the operating system isn't allowing the user uh, to go onto the internet. Uh, so maybe they, they don't have a, the, the right security protocol, etc. That would be a presentation layer problem. Session layer, again, as, as IT people, yeah, we sometimes deal with this. We don't deal with this a lot. Um, the session layer, again, is what actually opens up the session uh, between the two computers. Uh, now, if you're dealing with a website, if you administer a website, you may have settings within your web server uh, that are causing problems with the session layer. Um, Things like you know PHP config files or the Apache config files. If those are not set up properly, your sessions may not be be able to connect. So, so basically, the the user can get to your web server. They can open up whatever web page is on that server. But when the script runs to open open a session, let's say to to look at their 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 bank account information, for some reason that isn't working properly. So that that would be the session layer. Again, transport layer. Uh, we almost never deal with. Uh, this was more important back in the days of dial-up modems for the standard IT person. Uh, basically, again, this deals with uh, you know how much data is sent back and forth. Yeah, you don't use it a lot. The network layer, again, is a huge one though. This is where routers reside. So when you're dealing with, like I say, IP addresses, default gateways, subnet masks, DNS, all that crap, that resides on the network layer. This is where your IP address is. So uh, if you hear about net, uh, layer three problems, layer three is the routing layer. Underneath that is the data link layer. Again, this is, this is switches. Um, there's, there's a whole bunch of stuff that can happen with switches, but again, you know, anything you, you plug into the switch, the switch isn't working properly, information isn't being sent properly, sometimes the network is slow, that can be a switching problem. Again, uh, address resolution protocol and MAC addresses are at this layer. We will have a class on switches, I'll explain that more. And then the physical layer, again, you know, if somebody unplugs uh, the little, little patch cord or if somebody didn't punch down the cabling properly, uh, that is the physical layer. Again, all this is, all this is is seven layers. All, all it's trying to do is, is what I want you to understand it. Like I say, it's a professional tech. You know, I, I've done this a lot in the real world. What models like this try to do for you as a technician is when you walk in uh, to a problem, when you walk into a situation, you have no idea where to start. And this, this tries to give you 
just a model for, for, for how to think about the problem. So you walk in, an entire server room is down, or, uh, or nobody can get onto the internet, or you know any of the hundreds of problems. When you go in as a real professional technician, this is not going to be that some 12-year-old can't get onto the Pokemon website. It is going to be that email is not routing properly. Uh, you know, thousands of users cannot get to a, a web server that, that they need to get to. Information is not being sent properly. And when you walk into that situation, it could be any of a thousand problems. You know, even after you've done this for a long time, when you walk into a situation, I mean, it could be 10, 20, 30 different reasons uh, why the, the problems that are occurring are occurring. What having a model like this does is kind of tries to allow you to try to break down what the possible reasons could be uh, and, then, and then go about fixing it. So if you understand this, it allows you, like I say, just to give you a beginning point and then give you a place to start troubleshooting from. So, uh, so if, if you go in and, uh, you know, the, the first thing you do is if a server, you know, people can't connect to the server, you look at the back of the server and make sure that little, little connection, connecting light uh, is lit. If that's lit, that means you probably don't have a physical layer problem. You know, you go through it that way. Like I say, uh, this is something that it'll take you a little bit to get used to, but, but it really does work. But this, this is the OSI model. Again, you start at the highest level. The, the, the top layer is where the user is interacting with it. So the application layer, again, Firefox, Chrome. Presentation layer, basically the operating system. The session layer, the connection between the two computers. Transport layer deals with all the, the transport, how big packets are, that kind of stuff. Network layer, this is where your IP addresses resolve. If you have a network layer problem, uh, it's there, IP addresses. Uh, data link layer, this is where all the switching, ARP and MAC addresses happen. And then physical layer, all the physical cable stuff. It is really that simple. So that, that's really all there is to the OSI model. The, the OSI model is, is just a, it's a logical model to allow you to think about problems and, and, and try to decide where, where the problem may be. Um, like I say, is you, may, you may not know which specific router is the problem, uh, but if you can narrow down uh, that you're having a problem with IP addresses, then you know that it's a layer three uh, problem. Um, again, you know, with layer one, you, you know, if you don't have a little, a little connector light on the back of the computer, you may not know where the wiring got cut, but you know if there's no connector light, the wiring got cut uh, somewhere. You know, with the application layer, if everybody's screaming because, you know, they can't get to, to the website or whatever and you go in and you see the problem, Firefox or Outlook or whatever is corrupted, you know, it, it, it gives you an idea of where to start. You, you don't know the specific problem, but you have a better idea of, of where the problem is, it, basically using this process uh, to, to divide everything down. Again, the OSI model um, is not a huge issue. I know a lot of people pull their hair out uh, when, when they're trying to learn this because a lot of times you have to learn this for tests. Again, I had to learn this for certification. But if you do have to learn it, don't just forget it at the end of the day. I mean, it really is useful. I like I say, as a, as a 12 year technician, I use this. This is something that allows me to break down uh, where, the, where the problem is uh, that I'm looking at. Again, I may not know what switch is the problem, uh, but I can narrow down that there's something going on with the layer two, the, the, the switching. So that, that's basically all the OSI model is. I hope you understand it. Like I say, very useful, very, 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 very useful. Uh, as you know, I'm Eli the Computer Guy over here for Everyman IT. Uh, as always, I hope you understood this, this class. Again, important class, very, very useful. Uh, I look forward to seeing you at the next class.